hey guys welcome back to my channel so this is my review married at first sight season 9 episode 12 um let's get it out the way I want to give a shout out to my new subscribers Ms. Mad About Music Milan Monet and Tasha Zinyama hope that was right um, new visitors who have left comments but have not subscribed yet. I don't know what you guys are waiting on. Hit that subscribe button. But I appreciate you stopping by anyway. We have Michaela Simone, Cheetahs Fly, Yolanda Loves Mr. T, Shelly Charlesworth, and Kiss Lena. As always, I appreciate you guys stopping by my channel. I love to see you post comments let me know what you think about my commentary as well as the show thank you thank you thank you all right so this episode was mainly about the couples together as a group um it wasn't a lot of individual screen time like the other episodes so a lot of my commentary is going to be based off of the group reaction all right, so it started off with Deanna and Greg. It started off there on a double date with Deanna's sister and her boyfriend. Um, and it's funny because when Greg was doing his confessional and he was saying how he was on a date with her sister and her boyfriend, he kind of, he kind of not hesitated, but I guess the same way as how i reacted because he he came off more like a friend that was a boy versus her romantic boyfriend but anyway i'm gonna leave it at that so diana hasn't arrived yet she's working late and this gives greg the opportunity or so he thinks to ask um her sister you know get some insight on diana and um who she is how she is what makes her tick things that he is still trying to um get to know so diana's sister didn't really offer a lot not in my opinion she was very vague just like her sister she was like you know same thing it takes her time um you know it's gonna take her some time to warm up and um it's been 10 years since she's dated so and her you know her main relationship was in you know high school slash college so she doesn't really know what it's like to be in a real relationship um it's just gonna take her some time and to me it kind of came off as rehearsed you know what i mean it came off like before the show her and diana like this was the narrative we're gonna push whatever because she like that's your sister and that's all you have to offer that's all you have to say and to keep putting out there and and highlighting it's been 10 years it's been 10 years but you you guys failed to pinpoint that she has dated over that period of time like the difference in okay granted she has not said how long each situationship lasted okay but you have not been alone lonely by yourself for 10 years so i just need them to stop making it seem like for 10 years this girl has been a hermit and to her own admission over the 10 years she's been working on herself you know accomplishing things i i guess you know to better herself and so that when she does end up in a relationship she know who she is and she has worked on herself but we that is not the case anyway so greg is like yeah you know she has these walls up i'm talking double walls she got bars she got like he's saying it's so hard to get to know her and her sister you know kind of came off a little snarky she's like well you know that's just how she is and would you want you know you're gonna have to put in the work for her like would you want somebody that's easy you know is that what you wanted and i'm like <laughs> this man is 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 trying to get to know your sister now i'm assuming 
Deanna has talked to her sister about what's been going on with Greg. So if she has, and if she's been truthful, then her sister would know, like, this man is nonstop trying to impress her, trying to um, get to know her and, and, and make her feel wanted. So the little, I don't want to say attitude, like, attitude in, in a in an angry way but it was kind of an attitude like get over it if you want her you won't have to be patient and wait it, it is what it is type of attitude that's that's how it came off and anyway by this time Deanna shows up um they start their date which was throwing axes <laughs> which I thought one thing I would say about them they do seem to have out of all the couples they seem to have the most fun on their little dates and get togethers and things like that so Deanna and her sister were up against each other and they were throwing the axes and they were doing very well then it was time for the guys and I think it's pretty safe to say that Greg is not athletic whatsoever I mean we all saw him on the golf course and it was time for him and Deanna's sister's boyfriend I'm sorry I can't remember their names um it was time for them to go against each other and oh my gosh they yeah it just wasn't working out and <laughs> they were throwing it but nothing was sticking and uh so of course Deanna her sister got a kick out of that it was it was a cute and fun scene um but that was pretty much it with them you know next thing you know they show them packing for the trip and driving up to the cabin it wasn't a lot of camera time on them um individually as a couple so then we move on to matt and amber in this scene it is amber and her friend raven which i find i find their friendship very very interesting so they're out to eat and um of course the same conversation you know how are things going amber tells um raven that things are better she feels like matt is trying to open up more but however his actions are not matching his words um she's saying how she really wants to make it work and it's almost like every time they show Amber every time Amber's talking or her confessional it always looked like she's been crying or she's about to cry so while she's sitting there with Raven she had tears in her eyes and you know she's getting flustered she's getting like red and you could just tell she is really really struggling um anyway so she's just telling him everything that Matt's doing and so Raven is telling her you know she deserves better He's saying, you know, you don't deserve to be um, second choice. You don't deserve to be a backup option. You're an amazing person. He doesn't understand why Matt doesn't see that. And, you know, her friend is landing on, I mean, he's, and, and it seems very sincere. I don't get, um, you know how you have a friend that tries to, that's kind of jealous and they try to, you know, throw a monkey wrench in the situation i didn't get that at all i i feel he genuinely to me it seemed like he's into amber so i'm i'm kind of wondering how did they become friends why haven't they dated or if they have why it didn't work out but he pretty much was like everything that she wants to hear from matt her friend raven was telling her and you can tell what's going right over Amber's head. Like, because you know how someone tells you, like, oh, you're this, you're that. You you soak it in and you're like, oh, thank you, I appreciate that. No, she was still, her mind was still fixated on Matt. And I'm like, Raven, I, I just want to know what's up between them two because Raven's a very nice looking guy. They seem like a good looking couple together he obviously cares for her um and everything like i said everything that he's saying is stuff that matt should be saying so i'm just i'm just wondering what's the history behind um their friendship because usually i mean men and women i'm not saying you cannot be platonic 
friends. I've had male friends and it was just platonic, but it's because I wasn't attracted to them or interested in them. But my husband and I started off as friends. We we met in college, started off as friends, and we ended up getting married. Like he was my best friend. We ended up getting married been married for 16 years together for 19 known each other for 25 so i i say all that to say you know a lot of times well not a lot i won't say that but sometimes when men and women are friends it's either one of them are attracted to you know the same sex you know like you have one of them are gay or one or they grew up as kids and you know maybe she's a tomboy and they just they're just like homies type situation or there's just or one of them does like the other person does want more but the other friend is just totally not interested but you are not going to have a male and a female they're both attractive they're both attracted to each other and it's like oh let's just be friends someone is not interested in that scenario or they just have not made that move so i really 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 want to know the history of their friendship and why they are not together or, or have tried to be together but anyway so they go on and on and on he's you know just telling her that she needs to take more value in herself and she needs to really think about Matt is Matt giving you what you want is he saying what you need to hear is he making you feel the way you need to be feel the, the way you need to feel and you need to decide all of this before decision day so anyway that scene ends and next thing you know they're showing Matt and Amber packing the whole time she is she just looks so sad and drained and just not into it she she really doesn't amber seems like she has checked out emotionally i mean i guess after you've cried and cried and cried and you know we later find out how what's been going on between them when she starts talking to um the other women but she just seems like she's so drained so next we have Jamie and Liz. Okay, so we find out in this episode that Jamie has been gone for four days. Now remember when they had the big blow up in the car as they were leaving Liz's childhood home. And a lot of the arguments stemmed from the previous argument at the racetrack. So anyway, they had their blow up and we later find out Jamie left for four days. So this episode, this scene actually started off with Liz um, meeting Jamie up at some ice cream shop. So she calls him to come meet her. Now, mind you, they're getting ready to go on this couple's retreat. So I guess it's like, look, let's meet up and talk probably wanting to see if he's still going to go and probably you know just to smooth things over before they get there so he shows up he's eating ice cream she's drinking a soda juice whatever and jamie you know he's just nonchalant so liz asked him okay you know so how, how have you been these past four days and he's like great <laughs> things been good um, I feel at peace. Uh, I'm in a positive space. No arguing, no fighting. And, you know, he's all about all positivity, this, the positivity, that. And Liz kind of made this face, which I kind of made that same face because Jamie is using Liz words, Liz phrases, her terms, her everything, trying to, to me, it's like Jamie wants control at all times and he's very manipulative when Liz cut off sex that was giving her power giving her control because at that time she pretty much is 
dictating how things are going to go because it, it started affecting his behavior I mean their relationship is always dysfunctional but it did it did cause more drama in their relationship because a lot of his behavior was based off of the fact that she had stopped sleeping with him so Liz is like oh really oh, okay you know and then she asked um was he coming home that night and he's like yeah I'm here so he goes on to say you know yeah he's coming home but he doesn't want to come back to the same drama he doesn't want you know he doesn't want to be in that negative energy once again using her words and y'all know energy and the stars and the moon and the crystals all of that is 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 Liz right but now he's using it so he's like you know um he didn't like the way you know she talked to him the way she was treating him like everything was Liz's fault um the fact that she didn't seem remorseful about anything like all of that bothered him and he's saying you know he doesn't like that's negativity he doesn't want to come back to that he doesn't want that negative energy around him so at this point Liz is like okay like you could tell she wanted to say something but instead she just started slurping on her soda I mean slurping till there was nothing left but ice right so she held her cool she didn't say anything she didn't you know fuss back or anything she was like oh really oh okay so then Jamie says you know I've been thinking um I feel like maybe we should just cut back on sex you know just just put just take that off the table right now so that we can see if there's a, a emotional connection there we can better understand each other you know without the sex once again he's trying to take back the control he tries to make it seem like this was all his idea um you're not the one that's taking it off the table i'm the one that's taking it off the table and so but liz wasn't she wasn't disappointed though but that's what I mean by his way of being manipulative because when she suggested that, oh no, oh, he had a fit about that. Oh, how it made him feel rejected and disconnected and he doesn't see that, you know, that's a problem. How is that going to make things better? But now all of a sudden, yeah, he didn't say I agree with you when you said we should stop having sex he said you know i've been thinking and i think this is what we should do again making it seem like it was all his idea so anyway they agreed to you know put sex on the back burner for now focus on the emotional connection stop all the pettiness the arguing fighting they they agree so in liz confessional she's like i'm so glad he wants to take sex off the table for now and she kind of made this face like a sigh of relief which, which was funny to me but she was like yeah in three days you know things are change and um he won't be saying that in three days so anyway um they're back at home and it's the next day they are well jamie's sitting on the couch liz is on her tippy toes like a ballerina Look, well, it looked like she was talking to the frame, like the door frame. Like it didn't look like she was talking to Jamie, and she's hyped. And if y'all know, remember when I said, y'all know how Liz is. She's up and down. And remember when I said that I feel like when she's on her meds or she needs to take her meds, how her eyes get all glassy looking they also cross if you pay attention to her her eyes will start crossing when she gets in these in these hype moves so anyway she's just you know being her little erratic self and she's just talking and jamie is looking at her like what the hell is wrong with her now mind you liz been doing this since they've been together but all of a sudden he's acting very surprised to see her behave this way but anyway he gets up they start packing they hit the road now i want to jump into iris and keith and then come back to everyone arriving at the cabin so iris and keith very short um like i said this was mainly about the couples as a group so iris and keith are at home they're having dinner and um they start talking about decision day so iris starts referencing when they were on their honeymoon and when they went for a walk 
how when they came to the fork in the road, she was like, okay, which way do you want to go? Over here, like to the right is divorce. Over here to the left is, you know, happily married. And um, she was saying that on decision day, just keep that in mind. Like, like have that in your mind um, when you're trying to make your decision. So that was that was basically it. There was nothing else going on with them. So now we move into the actual arrival at the cabin. So Greg and Deanna are already there. They're the first to arrive. And they're walking around checking out the cabin. Greg is like, let's go and pick out our room right now, which I totally agree. And um, so they pick a room upstairs. In the meantime, they go downstairs. They're playing um, air hockey. And then Liz and Jamie show up. Liz and Jamie show up. Liz is still hype. They pull up and she's like, oh, look at the mountains. I mean, bouncing up in the seat, just acting, just like her herself. Again, Jamie turns and look at Liz and frowns his face like, and he even told her, he was like, look, you need to calm down. Like, rein it in. Calm down. Because she was just hyped for no reason. So... They're going to get out the car and she's like, oh, you know, you have to give me a kiss in front of the mountains. He kisses her and then turns around and wipes his mouth. And I'm not talking about just, okay, maybe she gave him a wet kiss and he wants to, you know, get the, get the, the juices off his lip. No, he wiped his lips like Liz had the cooties. It was very, it was just weird. Um, anyway, so they get out and they go, and he tell her again, you need to, you need to rein it in, calm down. They get inside, they're walking around, they end up downstairs where Greg and Deanna was, and they're just talking to greet each other, and then they notice the spider. So, everybody sees the spider, nobody wants to kill it, they ignore it, and it's like, whatever. So, they all go upstairs, and Jamie, um, in his confessional, he talks about how, the last time they were all together, how he felt the day was ruined because of the blow up between him and Liz. So he felt like to make it up to the group, he and Liz were going to cook dinner for everyone. Um, anyway, so Deanna and Liz were in the kitchen doing some prepping and Greg and Jamie go out to the grill. So it's the usual conversation Liz and um, Deanna are talking about, you know, their feelings and where are they at this point. And, you know, Liz is just saying how her and Jamie have had some up and downs, but they're still in it. She's still, you know, she's still feeling, still feeling him. Deanna is saying how she has advanced, how she went from one like, you know, liking him to now she, she really, really likes him. And, you know, she, Deanna kind of repeats herself, like, oh, I'm still getting to know him and we're, you know, opening up and, you know, we're doing good. And I, I, you know, I like him or I think I like him or whatever. It's kind of like, it's just the same script. So anyway, um, Jamie and Greg are, outside grilling so they're having their conversation and so jamie talks about you know the ups and downs with him and liz and he actually told greg which i was surprised how he envied what greg and deanna had that he felt they had a good connection they seemed to get along well everything seems to be good and he chalked it up to, you know, you guys took the time to, or you're taking your time to get to know each other. And you kind of set the foundation for that in the beginning before sex, whereas he and Liz did the total opposite. They, they jumped into sex first, and now they're trying to set the foundation, that emotional connection. Um, so then Greg you know, turns around and he's like, yeah, you know, you guys may have started off on a different path than Dion and I, but it doesn't mean you can't change it. You can't turn it around. Um, 
he was saying, you know, you have the power to make it better. And how he looks at it is if you really want things to work, you need to ask yourself, what do I need to do to make it right? What do I need to do to make it better? You know, and I thought that was pretty good advice. And Jamie thought so too, because in his confessional, um, you know, he was saying how Greg, how he, you know, he, he values what Greg says that he doesn't say a lot, but what, what he does say is very sound. It's very sound and very thought provoking. So anyway, um, they come, they're, they're sitting down eating dinner and then the other two couples show up. They come in, they greet each other. Now everyone is sitting down at the table eating dinner. And the, I don't forget who it was, but someone brought up the bear, seeing the bear. And of course, everyone was saying, you know, what they would have done and whatever. And so Matt is like, if I had a, a shotgun, you know, I would have shot that. And it's so funny how his, how his voice and demeanor changes. But, um, he's like, yeah, if I had a shotgun, you know, I would have shot that bear and made a, a, a necklace out of, out of his claws or something like that. And so, Liz kind of jumps like you could tell she's ready to say something and Jamie rubs her back and kind of give her this look like to calm her down so she does she doesn't say anything but she's like I think she she, she puts her hand to her face like you could tell she was just you know ready to just jump across the table at Matt and then in her confessional she was saying how you know no, you know, you don't, we don't shoot other animals. And so, I mean, it's obvious she's very passionate about animals and, you know, what Matt said, um, bothered her, which, you know, I can understand, but the way she, the way you saw her like getting ready to react to me, it's like, Liz, it's not, it's not that serious. He didn't shoot anybody. He didn't shoot a bear. He didn't shoot an animal. I can understand you being passionate about it, but everything doesn't require you to be on 10 at all times and just go ham. Like, no, it's not necessary. So anyway, um, everyone's done eating um, dinner and they're all going to their room. <laughs> so Keith and Iris go downstairs. All of a sudden, you're hearing it's this the screaming, <laughs> and the camera shoots to Matt. Matt has on a towel, like just a towel at the bottom. So he's he has on this towel at the same time. He's trying to kill this spider, like he's smacking the hell out of it with like this size 50 shoe, and it was real funny. So the next, mind you, this is the same spider that greg diana and um jamie and liz saw early on so the spider's still there mind you remember they didn't kill it anyway so the next day um they're at breakfast they're having they're cooking breakfast and liz asked you know Ooh, who was that screaming last night so iris tells her you know about the spider liz starts laughing and she's like yeah you know we saw the spider and iris is like what you know, y'all saw the spider. Like, you could have gave us a heads up. You ain't say anything, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you know, that spider was so big. So, Liz, this is where I thought, I thought Liz and um, Iris kind of threw shade at each other. So, Liz, cause, okay, Liz and Iris both can be hyped in different ways, but hype nonetheless. And so, Iris was like, oh, my God, you know, that spider was so big. You could at least told us and whatever. And so Liz was like, yeah, the spider was like you all legs, like in this, like there's nothing else to Iris body, but legs, like she's just all legs. So Iris was like, yeah, oh, I'm all legs, you know, and she's shaking her head and then she changed the subject. Like, yeah, you know, that's why all of y'all, um, you know, got the bedrooms upstairs. That's why y'all all went upstairs and left us downstairs with the spider. So then, um, so then Liz asked Iris, does she want to shout out tequila? Iris is like, no, no, I don't want that. You know, and Keith is kind of like, you know, 
Now, Keith, you already know how Iris is. We already saw the breakdown with over the lemonade. Like, you know how spastic she can get. So, my thing is, don't start getting cute and saying stuff to her in front of everybody thinking that she's not going to check you in front of them. So, she was like, no, I don't want that. You know, mm -mm, I don't want anything. And so, um, she's like, you know, I haven't had anything to eat. So, I don't have anything on my stomach. Then she goes... And I don't have, you know, because I don't have the body mass for all of that. So, like, in other words, she can't just drink on the empty stomach and be fine because she's skinny. Like, she's all legs. Remember, Liz? She's all legs. So, when she's like, I don't have the body mass for all that, I'm like, is she throwing shade at, at uh, Liz or, or Deanna? Too? Even though Deanna wasn't saying anything. But, like, in other words, I'm petite. I don't have the girth to, to, <laughs> to drink on the empty stomach. So, then Keith is like... Um, no, so, so she continues, you know, I don't have anything on my stomach. I don't want to throw up. And Keith is like, you know, try it. You need to push. He was like, you need to push sometimes. Honey. So Iris snaps and she's like, I don't give in to peer pressure. I do what I want, which was unnecessary, but she went there and Keith should have known. So then, um, you know, Liz and her little voiceover, her professional, she's like, um, you know, Iris and Keith, they are hard to read because they come off like they look like they're good, like everything's okay. But the body language says otherwise, which it's so funny to hear them critique each other's relationship because I'm like, all of y'all are a mess. Everybody is a mess. The only one who is remotely like just cool and straight and just really invested in this process is greg everybody else is a mess for real either they're not talking they're not expressing themselves or they're acting crazy or they acting shady or they, they they seem it's just only greg at this point is he he's in the class by himself he's on a whole nother level and the rest of them all together so um anyway they everyone's sitting down eating breakfast so Iris starts out with the questions and she asks, how are things going? And so Matt, you know, he responds with, oh, it's been quite a journey. And <laughs> Amber's like, do you care to elaborate? And I was saying to myself, Amber, leave it alone because my thing is this. I know they're all there together. They're supposed to talk about their journey thus far in the experiment and and all of that but to me I think there's there's certain things you should discuss with the group and then certain things that should be discussed with each other and the experts I don't feel I feel like if you haven't discussed don't discuss things with the group that you have not discussed with each other because my thing is don't let it be the first time they hear your disdain about something is in front of everybody else you see what i'm saying so matt is um anyway so amber is like you know do you care to elaborate and matt's you know he goes into how he's been feeling pressure from all different angles and you know he's just trying to figure out a way to express himself articulate you know what he's thinking and try to put it in a way that will produce posit a positive result so Deanna and Greg I'm sorry Deanna and Keith agrees you know so they're they're agreeing with what he's saying and now at this point they all move to the living room. So they're all in there. They were giving an exercise by the experts to, you know, talk about what they've learned about in, about each other and being married and what they've learned about themselves. So Jamie starts with, you know, marriage is hard and, you know, it's like, it's different than relationships you've had in the, he's had in the past so basically 
whoever he's dealt with in the past, the women, you know, if things didn't work out, it was easy for him to walk away from. But this is different because it is a marriage and it's not so easy to do that because you did make a commitment to this person. Um, then he further goes into how he and Jan he and Liz, you know, how they bump heads and they weren't getting along, but they're still trying. Like the feelings are there, so they still want to make it work. Um, so he was just saying how, you know, he realized that he needs to be more patient and he's willing to weather the storm with her. So Deanna agrees, you know, she's like everything is good and it's good to get opinions and suggestions from other people but she realized that you don't have to do things exactly like the other people you know to to get the same results like i don't have to do it j the exact same way that couple does it um that she was saying you know about herself she doesn't like to talk about feelings she says that you know if you ask her a question she'll answer it but that's it like she's not going to get too deep she's not going to go too far with it it's basically yes and no answers that she's going to give you and but then she did say she realized that by doing so it causes the other person to have to come to their own conclusions about what it is she's really trying to say so liz agrees with it iris you know she's raising her hand in agreement and then you know iris gives her her analogy about the missing pieces you know like okay i have a piece here I have a piece there what's in the middle what where are the other pieces so i just feel like you know he's not giving me anything else so i'm assuming these two pieces go together and Amber agrees as well and you know she adds her little part to it by saying um yeah you know if you give a short incomplete yes or no response then yeah the other person is left to figure out the rest so while Iris so Iris starts up again she's going on and on and while she's doing that Keith is sitting there not looking too happy he is sitting there with his leg crossed shaking his feet he's side eyeing he's side eyeing iris the whole time and you know while she talks about his lack of communication and again that's what i mean by because he's looking like this is the first time he's hearing all this so i'm like has she said this to him in depth before is this the first time he's hearing it because if it is it's kind of messed up you know he's he's put on the spot so um greg comes in and you know he's saying he agrees with what iris is saying matt jumps in he's saying you know why can't y'all just leave it alone why can't you just let it be <laughs> and it's like everybody just stops and like staring into space you know so matt was like you know stop overthinking things stressing out over it because it's getting in the way of actually enjoying spending time together now matt matt has a lot of good points he does but he doesn't apply them like he talks a good game however you are doing the total opposite like you're treating your wife like crap you know but yeah he's giving out all this good advice so keith says you know it takes time um they haven't known each other that long you know so it's gonna it's gonna take time to get to know each other like this is the fastest he's ever this is the first time ever that he's had to get to know someone this fast and open up and that and he admitted that this is the first time in since being in this experiment that um he has been this open so that leaves us to believe that yeah during all this time I and mean, we've seen it because i've even said that keith seems very very he's just so dry and so boring like whenever they show them there's really no umph to him like he's just there he'll say a word here and there he'll smile but he doesn't talk a lot and so during this group chat he 
admits that this is the most open he has been during this whole process um so it seems like keith matt diana jamie are on one page and then you have iris greg amber and liz on another and of course liz she's like see 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 i think this is when diana was talking and she's all bouncing like see jamie that's what i was trying to say that's what i was trying to get you to i'm like girl let everybody have their moment to talk and just calm down so matt on this trip is very talkative like he's spilling all the tea you know he was saying how um you know he was going he thought that when coming into this process that he was going to be all cool calm and collected and you know pretty much this was going to be an easy experiment for him and i don't know because he just thought he was joke smooth cool and you know they was going to match him up with somebody you know that he was going to like or if he just felt like look i'm here to get a check so i'm just going to fake it till i make it and until it's over with but he was saying how um yeah he thought it was going to be one way and it turned out to be the total opposite you know he was saying how um it was very hard coming from being a single man to now worrying about you know someone else's feelings about their emotions being accountable for them and he struggles with that and he was saying how you know he tries to do everything right and um you know and it's like wow and so he, he starts to struggle like he's stuttering and he's kind of he can't get his thoughts together so liz she just jumps right on in there with her little messy self and she's like you know man i feel like you're holding back you know what is it you want to say you know you could spill the tea here amongst all of us and amber just starts looking so pitiful and i felt bad because i'm the type of person when i see someone struggling or i see they're very very uncomfortable with a situation i am usually the one to try to deflect like just change the subject because i hate especially if it's in a group setting i hate to see i guess secondhand embarrassment very fast and i just hate to see someone hurting uncomfortable you know and all eyes are on them so i would have changed the subject and just you know but liz no liz is like keep it coming what more do you have let us all hear it and amber is looking like she wants to just crawl in a hole so matt you know he continues um you know talking about how it's it's more work than he expected but then i will give it to him now i don't know if it's because he saw how amber was looking and he he felt the energy off of her or if he was just looking out making sure that he looks good in the process i i don't know but he did rebound and he was saying you know but when you have feelings for someone you don't mind putting in the work and you know he feels like you know with him having feelings for amber the way he does that it's all worth it all the bs it's worth it to make it to the end with her now amber is looking like all of a sudden um liz is like oh you know like oh that's so sweet i wasn't expecting that and da, 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 da. And greg was like yeah you know that's what's up amber lays her head on on matt's arm and when liz said that i'm like yeah you were expecting him to really go in and just talk about how miserable he was pretty much to overshadow the hot mess that you and jamie been displaying all this time and i just didn't like that i'm like if he wants to get it out let him get it out if he's struggling with it keep it moving like don't put that pressure on someone especially when he's what he's saying at that moment has a negative tone to it and you see someone hurting because of it like don't push it so anyway um you know amber lays her head on his on his arm and um i mean matt is just landed on thick okay um so he was also saying you know at times he feels like even though he can be distant and this is during his confession he's like you know 
I know there are times where, um, no, it's not his confession. He's saying this in front of everyone. And he's saying, you know, sometimes he can be um, distant. But it's just that, you know, at the time he just needs his space so that he can get himself together and come back and be his best self to the marriage. And I'm like, so that's when Liz was like, oh, you know, everybody was like, oh, that's so sweet. And I'm looking like, dude, okay, so are you trying to say that all them times when you missing in action, you're out getting yourself together and trying to come back as your best self? That is so BS. So in Amber's confessional, you know, she's like, yeah, he's saying all this good stuff. And um, while it all sounds good, I wish he was telling the truth. Like, I wish he would say these things to me in private versus waiting until the last, you know, now to say it in front of everybody. So she basically feels like he's blowing smoke up everybody's ass. He's just trying to make himself look good. He's not genuine in what he's saying. His actions does not match the things that he is saying. And remember I told you guys in the last review how I think Matt is just trying to set everything up to make himself look like the good guy in this situation you know with him stop um having sex with her and laying it all on about oh this emotional bond and all that good stuff now he's professing you know his feelings and 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 his you know how much he wants this to work in front of everyone but amber just admitted in her confessional that he does not say any of this to her at home so who is the real Matt? Like, what, what is really going on? But, but we all know. We all know because Matt has been consistent from day one. He, his, his actions, his body language, all of that has spoken from day one that he was not interested. So anyway, um, they separate and the girls go. You know, one group. The guys go another group. And, um, no, 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 before that, Amber is saying how, you know, you should give, um, a hundred percent and, you know, Matt is like, well, you know, sometimes he may not always be able to give his hundred percent and, you know, it's hard when you feel like that's not enough. So now you have Iris and Amber, you know, they're going for a walk, right? They're going for a walk. Same conversation comes up. Iris is asking Amber, you know, how does she feel about Matt Worse not matching his actions? Amber is saying um, how she feels like there may be a little bit of level of, tr you know, truth in there somehow because if he's saying it, like, in other words, he's not saying all this stuff. He, he, he has to feel something to be landed on this thing. And she feel like there's some truth in there somewhere she feels like he does have some type of feelings for her um then she goes into about being vulnerable and she says that he comes off more vulnerable than her sometimes but he's still selfish and he puts himself first and something she said that i thought was interesting i mean we kind of all figured it out but to hear her say it when she was like you know he puts himself first but she puts his feelings first then she worries about herself second and I just thought that was just horrible it was hard I mean it's obvious she has low self-esteem but you're on you're 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 speaking it you're saying I put this man above my own knees so Iris you know she's like she she said in her confessional she was like you know I, I see that Amber has lost her spark you know her sparkle is gone and I will agree with that Amber I think the second no when when Matt left even though she was happy he came back she you know the the one month anniversary all of that Amber has not been her same since then and then when he left again, it's like now, I'm telling you, every time they show her, it looks like she has been crying or she's about to cry. She just looks depressed and drained 
all the time and i'm wondering how is that translating when she's at school with the kids like is she does she turn it on and off when she's at work is she just you know her upbeat bubbly self doing her job and then come home and just collapse or is it showing when she's at school so um anyway she's telling iris how her and matt decided to stop having sex focus on you know emotional bond and the amber i mean iris jumps out there and she was like see you know that's why i've been a virgin all this time because you know the truth to come out when that's all you're dealing with is emotions and getting to know each other and you know she feels like if he's willing to stay with me knowing that that's not going to happen and you know then that shows he's trying to get to know me and only me you know me emotionally without the physical being attached so then she's saying how you know she feels so blessed to have keith who you know he's trying every day he um you know there's no pressure and you know they're getting along and he's doing his part and he's not letting that situation of her you know them not being physical get in the way of getting to know her so anyway um but amber did say that matt was doing better with texting he's texting her more often and then i think iris was like well what you know how is it with about him coming home and she was like well he did get better but then he stopped and now he's you know going back to hanging out all the time she said he's with his friends every day like every day all day all the time and that's what's so alarming about the situation with matt the fact that he because matt is so smooth with it like this all this time at the cabin he's so calm cool I mean, everything he's saying, yes, it makes sense. Yes, it sounds good. He is not skipping a beat with what he's saying. But at the same time, he's still not coming home. So I just find that alarming how someone can lie and come off the way he does in front of the other couples and the whole time living a double life living a lie you're not coming home you you know he's getting better with the texting and that's just to keep her at bay but you're not sleeping with her you're not coming home you're staying out all day but then you get in front of everybody and you're like yeah you know she mean a lot to me so i'm trying to work it out i mean he was honey them those lines was coming out of his mouth like poetry so anyway they get back and um the couples are separated they're going on um their own little quote-unquote dates so greg and diana they go for taste testing they're eating bugs and jelly like mushroom it seemed like all of this time it's almost like their situation is all about diana it's all about her comfort zone it's all about her her needing time to express herself it's all about her getting greg to be adventurous because all of this stuff the the zip lining um the eating the bugs the golf everything has been uh what eating the octopus when they um had their one month anniversary dinner everything has been him giving him compromising him doing things to please her to make her happy like he has put in the work and in return it's the same scripted line well i'm 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 trying well it's hard for me well i mean i like him it's like where's the compromise on her part and i don't even know what she can do on her part but i'm just saying every time we see an episode with them it is always him 
catering to her him coming out of his shell him coming out of his comfort zone to do things that she wants to do so then they had Liz and Jamie they went to a salt cave and I think they later said this was Liz's idea. I'm not sure how that came about, being as though this was a couple's retreat that the show put together. But anyway, so they go to this salt cave, I guess, to recharge their energy. Um, Liz said um, that Jamie needed some tweaking. <laughs> you know, even though Liz is crazy as all get out, I like, she's funny to me she has her she has her moments but overall she, she i find her to be entertaining but anyway so they they go in um the people that were there did some type of i call it a ritual but it's supposed to cleanse negativity and and they agree to leave all of the negative energy in the salt cave so anyway, all the couples come back and um, they separate into two groups. Girls with, you know, the girls in one room, the guys in the other. And basically the same thing. They're having the same conversations over talking about the relationships, where they are, how they feel. And so Liz starts and she's saying how, you know, Jamie has his good parts and there's good things about him, but he has crossed the line a couple of times, which we've all seen. Um, she says she feels like, you know, he's good. He doesn't, um, she doesn't feel like he doesn't want to be with her. You know, like he goes off. She's not really taking accountability for her part in it. She's just saying he's crossed the lines, but she do feel like he wants to make it work. He does love her. Um, she did reveal to the group that he was gone for four days. And of course, Amber was, I thought Amber was going to high five her. She's like, yeah, oh, I know. So then Liz is like, you know, how, um, her and Jamie decided to wipe the slate clean you know she did say that she really loves him now Iris you know she comes in and she's like her and Keith are you know they were talking about how they like the good the good parts the bad parts and can they see themselves basically dealing with this stuff forever so i was just talking about how her and keith have some really really good times but then she said you know sometimes I, and she didn't mention what keith does so i can't pinpoint what part she's talking about because it's funny how she says he's not very talkative he doesn't express himself but then Oh, she has to ask herself, like, can I really put up with this for the rest of my life? Maybe she's talking about the, the, the lack of communication. I don't know. Because in another sense, she's seeing how she's so blessed to have him. Anyway, so Deanna, you know, she's not really saying anything. <laughs> Deanna's sitting there. And you know what? Deanna can't really say anything. But what can she say? Because out of all the guys, she has the good one. So she's not saying anything. And then Amber asked her, you know, well, how are things with you and Greg? Deanna's, you know, it's like, everything's fine. She tells them that, you know, she's the one that's moving slow, you know, taking her time. And um, that it's the same script, y'all. She's comfortable with him. Um, she talked about, you know, how she's comfortable with him. She likes him. She feels that... Um, you know she can't really answer like say for sure if she wants to stay married to him because they have another week to go what she says she said that like two or three times now what she's trying to figure out in this last week to for her to make her decision i'm not sure i don't know what else he could do but in her confessional she goes that um she did mention that she's worried that perhaps she's going too slow for Greg and that will cause him to say no 
on the final day. Um, I don't know. I'll get into at the end. I'll I'll let you guys know who I think is gonna say yes and no. So Amber, she chimes in and she's saying, you know, she just has to figure out her feelings. Like, does she like Matt? Does she care for him? Does she hate him? She is just caught in limbo right now. She doesn't know what to do, what to think. Like, and I and I can imagine it's confusing. This this dude go from y'all having sex damn near every day to him staying out to he staying out more then he cuts that out he's not texting you but then he now he's texting you but then he's gone back to staying out so and then then in front of everybody he's professing how he feels for you and how he wants this to work but then at home he's barely talking to you or touching you so poor thing she is going through it but she was saying how she thinks matt is freaking out because it's getting closer to decision day and you know she kind of was kind of making an excuse for him by saying you know maybe because he never really had a real relationship you know his upbringing and she was saying how his asshole tendencies are now coming out but they're coming out towards her like basically she's not doing anything to deserve the way he's treating her but yet all his anger all his frustration all everything negative is towards he, he's it's coming out towards her um so anyway so the guys the scene goes to the guys jamie comes out he's saying how he and liz have their up and downs and you know he feels like um their downs are not as bad they're not so bad that he wouldn't want to stay with her so he feels like if they can just not focus on the bad they'll be fine now jamie it's it's gonna take a little more than that you can't just ignore the bad you know you have to fix the root of the problem you gonna have to give some liz gonna have to give some you can't do this tit for tat i mean everything that we've seen you can't ignore the key to their issues you is, is preventive measure not after it's all happened then you want to fix it you have to prevent it from happening to begin with um anyway so then matt you know it's funny because matt like i said matt was doing all the talking you know professing his feelings and then he's going around the room asking questions like matt who made you the moderator you need to be sitting there and just be quiet but anyways so matt asked jamie is he 100 percent sure that this is it and jamie's like well you know what did he say he was like 100 is a, is a high is a high number is a high percentage but he does he said he does value liz and he can't imagine going back to the dating scene then you know matt's like man whatever you know like y'all were <laughs> y'all were damn near broken up last week so come on like and it's funny because you're trying to call jamie out basically saying jamie yeah right you know what happened last week was big now you talking all lovey-dovey matt you have some nerve because all of this stuff that you're doing behind the scenes at home you are the fakers of them all so Jamie's like, yeah, you know, it's been a roller coaster. Um, you know, but he wouldn't want to be with anyone else but her. He felt like they do love each other. They just have to figure out how, what did he say? They want to be together, but they have to figure out how to be together. And I, and I, I really like that because it can be a situation where you do want to be with someone you do want to love someone but you just don't know how like it's just not something is broken it's not clicking you don't know how to be together um so he was saying you know eight weeks isn't long enough to really know if you want to spend forever with a person and then you know greg chimes in and he's saying the same thing 
Keith's agreeing. And I'm like, you guys did know that this process was eight weeks. You're going to be married and make your decision at eight weeks. So I was confused with why all of them were saying you know we're talking about oh yeah eight weeks is not enough time and that confused me but anyway so greg you know he he starts talking and um you know he was just saying how the same thing with diana with her um not communicating and but he did say he didn't talk about her shortcomings affecting his decision what he was saying was regardless of what her decision is is not it has no bearing on his decision so he's saying regardless of what she feels what she thinks what she's going to say he has to be content with his decision whether that's to stay with her or leave at the end of the day he has to be content with his decision and i like that because you don't want it to be where okay i think she wants to stay with me or let's say deanna tells him prior to decision day and then he bases his decision off of that you don't want to do that you don't want to stay because you know that they want to stay together if you do not want it if you don't like he said if you're not content don't do it at the end of the day you it has to be your decision and how you feel so then keith you know he comes in and he repeats the same thing eight weeks is not um enough time to decide if you want to be with somebody forever and then he's like he probably won't have a decision until decision day which i don't understand that like okay so all of this time you spent with her you i mean granted no they're not going to know each other in and out in eight weeks but to say that you're going to wait on the actual day to make your decision so what you're waiting for something to happen that morning or the night before that can possibly change your mind and i and i'm pretty sure he probably was exaggerating a bit i, I don't think he's gonna wait until the actual last minute to make his decision um another thing that he said was about um iris you know as far as her decision so he was saying that you know he want he's wondering if if iris say yes is it because she wants to be married so bad that her attitude is like we can work through it we can get through it let's just stay married or does she want to stay married to him because it's him not just because she wants to be married um so keith i'm sorry matt you know so he um goes into you know he's invested so much and it's been a battle but i'm like matt what have you invested and he he said that a couple of times oh i've invested so much and i've done so much what have you done you haven't done nothing that we've seen you've done nothing but stay out all night and cause this woman grief so he's saying you know he's he's invested so much and it's been a battle but then he turns it around and he's like you know but he feel like it's helped them grow together and um you know it has taken time to ask himself he hasn't taken the time to ask himself is he truly happy he's been so focused on and this is this is the <laughs> he's steady he has been lying the entire weekend so he's like um he's been so focused on making sure that she's happy you know giving it to her giving her what she wants he's like but i have yet to sit down and ask myself am i happy with what's going on am i happy with the situation so um you know keith is like i said he goes into look at the end of the day we're just trying to do what's best for us now i mean what is he talking about the couples is he talking about his individuals and he's saying you know it shouldn't be taken lightly which i totally agree um anyway so now all the couples are in bed iris you know she goes she's just like i'm tired let's just turn off the light go to sleep 
that's what they do Liz and Jamie they're laying there and they're talking about how cool they think the other one is and how much they love each other they kiss they go to sleep well they turn off the lights Amber and Matt Amber is already in bed Matt comes in he's like you ready to go to sleep Amber sure they turn off the lights so there was nothing but Deanna and Greg so they're sitting up there and Deanna's talking about you know everybody what everybody was saying um you know when they had their little groups and had their little chats and Greg is so funny because um Greg was sitting there and he's like it's almost like she was talking and all he had on his mind was sex Greg looked like he was ready like he was ready for some love and so He's like giving her the sexy stare. He's lowering his voice. He reaches over and like, you know, not grab her hand, but he reaches over and touch her hand. So, you know, he's touching her fingers. And um, so he's like, you know, so do you think we've gotten closer, you know, during this? <laughs> and she's like, yeah. So she takes her hand back. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if y'all noticed. So she takes her hand back and she was like, yeah, you know. Um, I was I would say we've gotten to know each other more and gotta know ourselves the same stuff Deanna always says. And <laughs> Greg is looking like um now I done I've been eating bugs all day and slimy mushrooms, so I'm looking for my reward. <laughs> That's how he was looking. And she started just talking. So in her confessional she basically was talking about how far they've come how um you know they've come she's come from being comfortable liking him really liking him and then she says you know love is somewhere way you know further down the track and um she feels like they'll get there that she wants to get there um she, so they're like okay we gotta go to bed she did ask him for a kiss though i will say that because she probably he, he was looking like a little sad puppy dog so she did ask him for a kiss they kissed and then that was the end of that so overall it was a good trip there were no blow-ups there was you know nothing crazy everyone got along I mean, you can tell there was tension, like with Matt and Amber, um, a little irritation with, with Jamie and Liz, but nothing compared to how they are normally. So I would say it was a good weekend. It was nice to have them all together. Um, as far as decision day i would not be surprised let's see the only one i would be surprised at is if greg says no i would be surprised with that because i feel like greg is really committed to this process i think he feels like maybe he feels like once the cameras are off that diana would open up and things would be okay between them i don't think he really wants to start over out there in the dating world so i would be very very shocked if he said no keith everyone else i can see saying yes and some of them saying yes to save face let's start okay matt and amber see now you would think that amber would say no right and I would be very, very surprised if she said no. I don't know. I don't know because last season with Kate, I just knew Kate was going to, you know, still be like, yes. But Amber, I don't know. Matt, I think is going to say, I would not be surprised if he said yes to save face. Matt is all about his image right now. So he'll say yes, but then he'll divorce her once the show is over Liz and Jamie I think are going to say yes um Keith 
Okay, if Keith says no, he's going to come with the whole, I don't feel like I'm the one to take her virginity. I don't feel like she wants me to be the one. He's going to come with some line. If he say yes, he is saving yes to not look like the guy that broke up or that divorced his wife because she was a virgin. But he'll divorce her when it's over, when the show is over. Iris, I think, would say yes. Deanna, I feel, will say yes. Deanna is in love with the thought of being married. She wants to be married. And I think she... I think she likes hanging out with Greg because they have fun together. I don't think she's necessarily attracted to him and I don't think she is really into him. Like he would not have been her choice. So I think when she's talking about opening up and getting comfortable with him, I honestly feel like Deanna is forcing herself to be romantically attracted to Greg and I think she feels like with with time and if he continues to do what he does with time she will get there that's what I believe and I think that's that's what she's saying without saying it I like him I like what he brings to the table I like him his personality I like the stability that comes with him and just the thought of being married and not having to go out there because the way Greg has presented himself he's going to take care of her and I'm not talking about financially I'm just saying she has seen him put in the work so I think she loves that so in her mind I got a good man I got a good catch I just have to condition myself to love him that's what I think. So I think her and Greg will say yes. If he says no, I would be shocked. Um, yeah. So that's what I think. Matt and Amber, he's going to say yes. Or he's going to come with the whole, well, I felt like we waited too late to get to know each other. And it's just not enough time. And I just had, he's going to come with some whole poetic bs amber is kind of up in the air you know i hope she surprises us and says no i i, I really i'm 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 fighting for her and her and raven to be together i want her and her and her friend raven to be together but anyway guys that is it that is my commentary please leave your comments below let me know what you think about the show and until next time, take care.